she inspires is about recognizing the extraordinary women around us who inspire people every day. It's about hearing their stories, championing their efforts, and saying thank you to them. It's also an amazing opportunity for us to draw inspiration from their lives, which will enhance our own. My name is Penny Bird, and I started the She Inspires initiative three years ago when I realized my mum had absolutely no idea of the massive impact she had had on all her dance pupils' lives. So how does She Inspires work? During the second half of February, I invited nominations for She Inspires. And during the first two weeks of Women's Month, the people voted for the She Inspires winner. Tonight, I announce the most inspirational woman in Harpenden 2020. Well, I'm absolutely thrilled that I've got all of you here together, as well as Emily, whose last year's She Inspires winner. Wow, that's a really a big bonus. Um, I'm just going to make a few announcements before I introduce you. Firstly, I just want to let uh, the viewers know that this session has been pre-recorded yesterday so that we could premiere it live on Facebook today. And, we, and we've done this so that we can involve you um, and let you ask questions of any of the uh, panelists that you'd like to. All you do is during the premiere, just write your questions in the comment box. And if you want to direct it to any person in particular, just put their name in there and then they'll answer as the session goes on, as it goes on. Um, one of our nominees, Jenny Frolich, who is the managing director of the Panama Hat Company, unfortunately couldn't be here with us tonight. I did speak to her um, nominator, her daughter, Mavi, um, and uh, Mavi said um, she nominated her mum for her incredible tenacity and, and um, drive as a businesswoman, um, always acting with a sense of fairness. And I'm really sorry that she's not going to be here tonight because um, I'm sure we could have learned a lot from her. But I hope she gets um, better soon. In terms of the format, um, tonight is really relaxed. I just thought that because Zoom is the new uh, going out, um, <laughs> that, that we'd all dress up and be together for you because it's very unusual to have such a gathering of experts on inspiration. And I think the world would love a bit of inspiration from you wonderful women. So um, we're going to share it tonight and have a little chat, a conversation, maybe give people a recipe for inspiration. Who knows? Um, but uh, Feel free to chat amongst yourselves and add any comments, if you will. It's not sort of one person speaks and then we move on to the next. So I'd like to start by introducing Emily Ketchen. You can thank <laughs> <Hi>. you. <laughs> um, she's a wife, mother, city lawyer, a local celebrity, and she broke the record for the number of nominations last year. I think you had about twelve, didn't you, Emily? <laughs> it was oh wow. <laughs> um, yeah. She was called amazing, an absolute warrior, a true Harpenden hero, and she earned herself the unofficial title, the voice of Harpenden. And I want to thank Emily because she has been so supportive of me and She Inspires, even over the last year. She's had a meeting with me to chat about ideas and ways of improving She Inspires. And she's even here tonight despite her heavy schedule. So I really appreciate that, Emily. I don't know, I wouldn't miss it for the world. A bit different to this time last year, isn't it, though? It is. We were all in a room having drinks and cannabis. <laughs> 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 I think 
<laughs> we were all in the same room having drinks. Oh, yeah. yeah that's Cup that's tea. Tea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, introducing the nominees then. So Claire Childs, there's two Claires, so it's a little bit complicated. But Claire <laughs> is wife and mum of two-year-old twins. That in itself wow. is pretty <laughs> amazing. <laughs> A professional orchestral flautist and she's brought music emotion and love uh, to the lives of dementia patients and their families by setting up the sing-along group called at Willow Court Care Home called Sing From The Heart and it's an intergenerational group so she takes her children along and families and and um, retired people all ages and they all have a fantastic time. And and I have spent a little bit of time with Claire. It's been absolutely amazing. And I would say that she has only one setting. Everything she does is straight from her heart. And it's all about music, playing the flute, the piano and singing. And you can't help but be transported to a happy place when you listen to her. Um, her sing-along group came about when her mum was diagnosed um, with vascular dementia at the age of 67, not long after the birth of Claire's twins, probably when she needed her mum the most. Um, she's not someone who's going to be knocked over by life, though. She turns hardship into opportunity. And I'm really so honoured to meet you, Claire, through She Inspires. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> um, Rosemary Farmer. Hi, Rosemary. Hi. Hi. <laughs> you've lived, is it 20 years you've lived in Harpenden? Yeah, 21 this year. 21 years lived in Harpenden. Longest I've lived anywhere. Oh, wow. And I'm not going to ask how you've got family connections in the town for over a century. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Um, what I loved about chatting to you about was how you support, um, you've got a very strong desire to support women to do voluntary work and work in their communities. And the reason for this is because you have got so much back from whatever you've done in your lifetime of community and voluntary work. Um, going through your list of um, accolades, you've served as town councillor, district councillor, Mayor of Harpenden on three occasions and Mayor of St Albans in 2019. Also being school governor, chairman of the Harpenden Day Care Centre Association, trustee of Druglink, trustee of Harpenden Connect and governor of the Hertfordshire Part Partnership University NHS Foundation Trust. And you've also raised thousands of pounds for various charities over the years, including one very close to your heart, Mind in Hearts. What an honour it is to have you here tonight, Rosemary. Thank you also for joining us. Yay. <laughs> Thanks very much. So Claire Gillies. I'm loving the blue. That's definitely your favourite colour, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Claire's also amazing, a wife, mum of two, plus a really cute dog who I've been lucky enough to photograph here and there, and a teacher at the local school in Harpenden. And if this is not enough to keep her busy, she's also <laughs> set up her own business called Delicious and Real. Talking to Claire, I noticed that she's a real expert in organizing things. She seems to have everything really well organizing, all those meal plans and recipes sorted out well in advance. It's not like me. I work um, more. <laughs> I'm about 10 minutes before dinner, I decide what we're going to have. <laughs> Uh, but, the, but I think what makes you so special, Claire, is the fact that you pour love into everything that you do. They do say the secret ingredient um, for a meal is love, and I think, I think you put a lot of your heart into that as well. It's proved to be very, very popular, and you've got an amazing um, following on Instagram. How many followers have you got now? 
on Instagram. Um, about a thousand on Instagram and about one and a half on Facebook. Wow. Well, it's been so great working with you as well. So congratulations on your nomination. <laughs> Angela. <laughs> I, I, this is the first time I've met you. I mean, I've, I'm familiar with some of the other faces. Rachel's a new one as well, but it's the first time I've met you and it's so amazing to meet you and chat to you. What I love about She Inspires the Most is the fact that I get to meet such amazing people. It's really great. Rachel, uh, Angela um, runs a local family business, business with her husband called Zing Wellness and has three young children. The youngest is one. Two now, just two. two. Okay. She's had chronic health issues on and off since early childhood. Um, and through research, testing, and experience, she's developed a really deep understanding of the, uh, the positive effect of a holistic approach to health and well-being. And she wants to, to share it with as many people as possible. When I chatted to Angela, I realized she is incredibly honest and humble. And the one thing that moved me the most when we spoke was she told me her story. And then I said to her, I really don't know how you picked yourself up and carried on after that incredible experience. It must have been awful. And she said, Penny, you would have done the same thing in my shoes. And I was like, wow. <laughs> it's just, there's no pretense about her. She, she, she shares everything with her pupils, her students and clients. So they feel extremely relaxed and they have amazing, loyal, valued friendships with her. And your cats appeared <laughs> as well <laughs> to wish you well. So Aww. congratulations on your nomination, Angela. Lovely. Thank you. And lovely to meet you too. <laughs> Lorraine in the corner. Well, you're in, you know, on my screen. <laughs> is a textile designer, a mum and a grandmother, and she is the driving force behind establishing the Redbourne Emporium. Has anyone been there? No, never been. Yay, Hi. you two have. <laughs> Great. It features the work of 25 crafters and makers and runs workshops for children, and Lorraine has got lots of ideas and exciting future plans for growth. And in August 2019, Lorraine had an unfortunate car accident um, coinciding with her divorce. And this made her look for a new purpose in her life. And I know she felt really strongly about building up her confidence and doing something for the community. So it's no surprise to me that she's managed to bring all these creatives together to provide a shared platform to sell their work to the local um, uh, community. And I know it changes and enhances a lot of people's lives. So thanks, Lorraine. <laughs> Congratulations. And last but not least, in the top left-hand corner on my screen, <laughs> Rachel. <laughs> Rachel is so filled with energy, good health, and positive vibes. When I went to visit her, I was really worried that she was going to make me run a marathon before I left her house. <laughs> She's mum to two boys. One of them was born critically ill. He's now fully recovered. And Rachel navigates this challenging time by running regularly outdoors with a friend. And she never looked back. She trained as a run leader and started Run Redbourne, a group which has grown exponentially. It now has 500 and? I think about 510 online. Oh, wow. Members. And she's also focused her attention on active in Redbourne and was instrument, instrumental in campaigning to establish the Redbourne Mile around the common. And it encourages people to run, jog, and scoot around there. So getting all the people active. 
And I loved when, when I chatted to um, Rachel, I loved that she is so passionate about getting people active and doing things for the community as well. So, wow, awesome to meet everyone. Yes. Right, so I was thinking, let's try and inspire uh, some of the people stuck at home during uh, this lovely time. Um, because you guys are so great on inspiration and inspiring people. So I was wondering if I can ask you a, a question because we have, we've got Claire, Angela and Rachel who really look at the healthy eating and the wellness and the sports side of life. And then we've got Claire with music and Lorraine with the creativity and Rosemary with the co community work and I think all of these factors are a really you know they make up our whole lives they they're a good basis for inspiration so I thought I'd start off um by asking Lorraine can I ask you a question first yeah. feel free if you have an example or something that you'd like to share then please let us know but, or just mention it. But um, Lorraine, you are a very, very clearly a very creative person, both in your personal life and in the design work that you do. I saw some of your creations. And I was wondering um, if you ever feel like you need inspiration, where do you go for it? Do you go to people or where do you find the inspiration for all the work that you do? Um, I think first of all I look outside of my home. So I go for a walk, um, I just go to a beach, which we can't do at the moment, but I would go to a beach or just take some inspiration from what I see around me. And, um, and then I might draw it or just look at it, just see what the message is, what it's saying to me and try and then put that into work, into some work. Yeah. Do you, does it, do you make lots of connections with people as well? Do you oh, get definitely, yeah, definitely. With the people aspect is um, at the moment I'm trying to think of something that we could maybe all do as a community but from our homes. So that maybe we could, like, they're doing the rainbows in the windows at the moment, but maybe the children could all do a project and I could take photos and then show it to everybody what, what they've done. So it becomes not on your own. So my granddaughter might do something and her friends might do something. And we can share it with other children. And um, I've just ordered a load of um, pom-pom makers so I'm going to ask maybe the community if they want to get involved with making lots of pom-poms and then make it into something. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> so um, just trying to sort of interact with people while they're at home. Yeah. Okay, so, so connecting with people and, go, and the outdoors is inspirational. Yes, yeah. Even though we can't go out at the moment, but... Um, just to try and connect with people like doing what we're doing now and trying new things yeah because i think this is all it's strange for us to be talking on a video but yeah get out of your comfort zone and try new things okay anyone else got anything to add no I just think this, this time um, is just a really interesting time to try new things. So we've all got our specialisms and you know, mine's running in groups, which obviously is a complete no-no at the moment. So it's kind of inspiring people to find other ways of running. So getting their playlist up to scratch, you know, um, do they, you know, can they go a little bit further? Can they actually, you know, go a little bit quicker? Can they do something different from what they would normally do? Um, and we've been working with our run leader group, you know, what routes can we go on where we can socially distance? you know which are the narrow paths which are the wide paths which is something we'd have never thought of before but i'm currently writing up some yeah. guidelines about you know how to do running with social distancing um well perhaps, perhaps you could get a tape measure um, <laughs> and sort of like hold it uh, you know in a line or i don't know mark it on a bit of string and maybe all hold a bit of it or something along you know like <laughs> run together yeah. that distance <laughs> i don't know it might be fun <laughs> I must say, I spent a lot of time wondering if um, 
lots of things are not going to go back to the way they were before. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, all, that's always actually an unknown, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, a lot of, some things won't, a lot of things will, because that's human nature. Yeah, I agree. I think, though, it's definitely, as I said, taking us out of our comfort zone and trying new things. You know, yes. Like just social media, I think we're going to touch on that a lot more now. I yeah. think, in an odd sort of way, those of us who are old enough to have I mean, I'm, I'm not old enough to have been in the war, but I'm old enough to have had a ration card. I grew up in the 50s. And in some ways, perhaps some of us are readjusting back to life then to some things that were simpler. Mm. Yeah, that's a good thing. I agree. Angela, mm. I, I wanted to ask you, you told me the story about your lowest point in your life where you really felt that you couldn't go on. And I think a lot of people, not a lot of people reach that point, but if you are ever at that point, can you share with us what actually kept you going? What made you carry on? Um, kindness from the most unexpected people. Um, many were strangers to me. They might have been clients of James's or they knew me as a Pilates teacher because a friend came to my class but had never met me or my neighbors that I didn't know that so well some I did some I didn't but literally people rallied around in a way that I would never have expected <clears throat> um, wow. I have one lady that I'm teaching now and I'll never forget, she messaged me at the time and said, you've taught a lot of my friends, you've never taught me. My husband starts work really early. He's home by five, five-ish, so I'm always around to help if you need help with bedtime. Um, and that was someone who I'd never, you know, I'd never met. I'm, and, and I remember that an, an, a nanny in Harpenden, if you're watching this, I'm really sorry I forgot your name, but she contacted me and said, I'm a nanny in Harpenden, I see you around Harpenden all the time with your small children, um, I've heard what's happened, um, if you want some childcare, um, I'd like to gift it to you, yeah. and I didn't even know who she was. Wow, that's so amazing, isn't it? Yeah, but they say, the psychologists say that actually doing good deeds for other people um, boost your own, um, your own mental health. And so they often say that, uh, that actually happiness, we, we're just linking it back to our conversation about coronavirus. I think we've kind of gone on down the wrong path in some cases on what we think happiness is. And actually it's a lot more, a lot more it's kind of simple acts that, make us happy and so you know I've kind of created I know you're very near me Claire but create a little neighborhood whatsapp group and you're on the na next neighboring one and I've met some really neighbors that I've never I'd never have um, had the opportunity to meet before you know in their 70s and in their 80s and today I received a letter from one of the ladies because she's not on whatsapp and she doesn't know how to text this beautiful letter and that's all for me just popping a note through her door and saying I'm your neighbor, we're putting a little community WhatsApp group together. And I think we kind of forget sometimes that these little simple acts of kindness is what can sometimes get people through a bad day, or in my, in my case, a tough time in my life, which I'll forever be grateful for, forever paying, paying it back, paying it forward. That's amazing. But that links yeah. to, to what you were telling me, Rosemary, about how you just, it's all about what you get back because you get back so much more than it, you put in. It is. And I mean, to emphasize, as you and I have discussed, I, I mean, I became a counsellor because I thought it was one way of serving the community, but I also did it after I had tremendous tragedy in my own life and a loss. And it's quite true. I found one of the best ways of dealing with it is is to go out and well apart from the huge kindness i had from people at the time and from friends but is to go out and try and do something positive for other people and it's one reason i'm so involved in the mental health charity is that um is to use a tragedy to 
try and be positive and to try and prevent it happening to other people. That's amazing. Claire, I wanted to ask you about um, passion and how passion can be used for inspiration because your passion for your music is just astounding and the power of music is also amazing because I know that uh, I use music for one of my happiness triggers so if I ever need cheering up, I just stick my earphones on and go outside and I'm absolutely on top of the world again. So have you got any sort of experiences where music, I know with the dementia patients, has actually made a massive impact that you've seen? I think it can for everybody. I mean, even on a very small scale for us at the moment, we feel a bit cooped up. We've got two toddlers running around in a quite small house and we've changed breakfast into boogie breakfast so we put some music on they eat their breakfast and they dance in their high chairs and like even that just simple things just a few tracks from from our ipad and they they're quite happy and they're doing something different um my husband started it he did it a few weeks ago and he's like oh they really like it if you put music on they really enjoy that and at the moment we're putting music on more because we feel a bit trapped in the house so um you know if you feel that you want to relax you could put some a type of music on that will just help you chill out or if you want cheering up you know whack a bit of stevie wonder on and you might feel a bit happier or some salsa music and dance around your kitchen <laughs> i love stevie wonder <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and with the dementia patients as well you were telling me about your mum? Yeah, I mean, you know, again, my parents are, are very stuck at home. It's very tricky for people with dementia with this isolation. Um, yeah. yeah, it's musical film, any kind of music on, uh, whether it's a record or a CD or the radio. Um, music can help calm people who are agitated. Um, it can help entertain people and it can spark memories. So you can put an old track on of, I don't know, My Fair Lady or something, and there'll be people in the care home who will sing every single word wow. and don't normally communicate. It's a different part of the brain that music affects, so you can bring out this like spark and personality and, and memories of people that you think wouldn't remember all of these words to a whole entire song because they can't communicate well, and yet that can, it can happen, and it does happen, and it's amazing when it does. That's so cool. <laughs> And you, Claire, have you got a recipe for, for inspiration? Recipe <laughs> for inspiration. I haven't got a recipe for inspiration, but it's been interesting listening to everybody else because my story echoes so much of what's just been said. So, like Rosemary said about channeling your grief into something, because I've had personal tragedies, and the same as what Angela said about people's kindness. So, actually, I think that's where inspiration. For me, that's where it comes from. It comes from your own personal journey and how you can sometimes turn something that could be very negative into something positive and use it to help others. And I think that's what everybody here has done. They've all had something in their life which has sort of enabled them to give something back. And it's that power of giving back. It does, and it sounds to itself, it does make you feel good yourself. And I think you know, that's partly what it's about. It's that. You know, it gives you the boost when you do that good deed or you inspire somebody or someone you know, just someone just says thank you to you it's lovely yeah. Rachel um I read um something recently which basically indicated that if you get uh, if you master the physical the rest of your life just falls into place because everything seems to be less impossible and more possible because you've mastered yourself. And that can be not only exercise, but food, sleep, you know, um, good eating, creativity, music, everything. Have you got, do, do you find that for yourself? Yeah, ab absolutely. I mean, obviously my passion's running, but when you come back from a run, you eat well, you know, you're not going to put rubbish into your body when you come back, you know, you put lots of good stuff in and then you know that if you sleep better, you'll run better and it all just keeps going and then you'll do something and you miss a week or two and it's amazing how you kind of go, oh, it all just falls apart and then you go for a run 
and they all just start slowly going back into so it's making that habit making that consistent so that you make sure you're always doing it and making time to do that even if it's half an hour walking or jogging or running or whatever um you know that you're going to feel better afterwards and i think that's what gets me out um you know on an evening i don't really like running in the evening when it's cold and you need head torches and you just know how you feel afterwards and it's harnessing that feeling and going i know how i'm going to feel afterwards um sometimes i've had to be pushed out the door because my husband's like i know how you're going to feel go and and it's true and it then knocks on like you say to all other all other elements you know there's a massive link between um uh, mental health and physical health as we're all beginning to understand more and more um and that's a big part of um, our run club now we're, we're really looking into to that and being running with other people as well and how important that is not at the moment <laughs> <laughs> and emily it's a lovely feeling as well. oh sorry i was just going to say it's a lovely feeling building that kind of tribe if you've got a group of runners i find in my classes that they've kind of this this kind of group of women who come every week and one of them jokes saying you know when we're like in our 80s Angela we're still going to be here every Thursday morning at 9 <laughs> and you're telling us to stop chatting and concentrate and blah 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 and but actually that kind of creating that network of support for yeah mums is really rewarding when you know what a kind of tough job it is these days trying to juggle rear motherhood running a home homeschooling um <laughs> thing. so kind of giving them an opportunity to have carve out just a little bit of me time and knowing what a positive effect that can have on them mental well-being as well as their physical well-being I actually i'm sorry i just wanted to say something because i'm um just think that whatever passion we have you know whatever the running food or making something i think that's what comes across tonight that is what we're all saying if you go with your passion it sets you alight and we all are trying to enhance other people's lives and give them some of that as well so you know i, I feel like it's sort of like a burning desire to sort of share that you know go with your passion and um, and it'll come through and I think with the coronavirus I suppose we've all been like thrown back a bit and it's it sort of like started off a bit not so serious but I suppose now it's it's hitting home a little bit for me and um, so it's amazing that we've all got the same connection as to the group as well and on the outside world so yeah sorry it got a bit serious then sorry <laughs> It's back to you, Penny. Sorry. <laughs> I was going to say it was a very good point about making a little bit of me time as well. Yes. And everybody who knows me now falls about with laughter at this point as I'm the absolutely <laughs> world's worst at doing that. But it is important that people do take a little bit of time and have a little bit of space in all of our own lives to do to do something purely for a bit of a little bit of enjoyment, make some time in the day, do something you like. In my case, it's my case, it's music or or it's reading. But I think it's very important because yeah, you need yeah. to look up. We need to look after ourselves as well as other people. Yeah. Wow, yeah. I think you guys have put an amazing recipe <laughs> for inspiration together, <laughs> <laughs> Emily. Um, as the winner from last year. Did um, taking part or being nominated for She Inspires and winning last year, has that it made any impact on your lives at all? Yeah, um, first of all, um, can I just say my passion and not train, right? <laughs> 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 my, my passion is not Are you um, sure about that, Emily? <laughs> <laughs> for me, it was that kind of injustice, the injustice that I felt when Tempsley took away a third of our key trains and were trying to pretend that they were adding more, adding more and adding capacity and all the information which in my view was and still is a very, very misleading. Um, and I started the campaign because it just wasn't right, it wasn't fair. And we have to find time to, to, to deal with these things. And it was really lovely, actually, I have to say, um, when I look back on, on the, the journey, not, not the actual Hemsley journey, um, that's the one good thing, like, <laughs> commuter, of course. 
actually one of the moments that I kind of, I really remember very, very fondly is, is that very nice evening uh, we had at Parkview Cafe. And it just felt really nice where the community were coming together. And yeah, it's been really, really nice. It's been a bit surreal. It was, it was very, very surreal, still is surreal at the time. The number of people kind of come up and thank me. But I didn't feel like I was doing anything special. I was, I was doing it because it was the right, right thing to do. So, and I've had an awful lot of support because the campaign isn't at all about me. It's about everyone who go, gets on the train into London or who has other ones who get on the train into London. And I had an awful lot of support. But it was, it was a very, very nice moment. And I remember it very fondly. Oh, well, it, it was amazing. I've, I've, I was really blown away by all the work that you've done. And one thing that I find as well is that I've been carrying on my life, um, doing my thing here in Ox Lane, and I had no idea about all the amazing, incredible women in the Harpenden area and all the things that you're doing. And to me, this is just amazing. It's like opening up presents all the time <laughs> and meeting you is just brilliant so it's you're enriching my life and lifting my life up and i hope it's the same for the other people who hear your stories because you really are inspirational i've got um a little message that um i'd like to play for you um from an admirer <laughs> <laughs> she Inspires is an amazing initiative. It's an opportunity for us to highlight the most inspirational women in our community. First up, Angela Rake. Now, Angela is not only a great person, she's a mother of three. She overcame pretty serious cancer a few years ago to set up a brilliant Pilates business uh, and is a, is a wonderful Pilates teacher. Now, I have to be honest, I have myself not done Pilates but my wife does do it and she tells me Angela is amazing uh, and I just know how much inspiration she gives to so many people and she's a very very worthy nominee. Redbourne is a, um, is a brilliant village and why it's such a nice village isn't just because it looks nice but the people really really come together. Lorraine Island is one of the leaders in that community, bringing people together with the Redbourne Emporium, which, is, which brought together people who are arts and crafts makers, uh, artisans, to sell their, sell their products, make sure that local people get a chance to buy what is locally made in that village. And through this work, and for her, her whole presence, her personality, and everything that she does, she should be a very, very strong contender. Thank you. If you are walking in the village of Redbourne, you may see a group of people, men and women, old and young, running around. Rachel Mackey is likely to be the head of this group. She has set up Run Redbourne uh, and since then set up Active in Redbourne, which is an organisation trying to make as many people in Redbourne active as possible, uh, making that inclusive as possible as well. And so that's a brilliant initiative that has inspired so many people. Uh, Mental health is a, is a subject that's never far away from, from, from any of us. And Rosemary Farmer, for twice mayor of Harpenden, uh, has been a real leader in this area. She's done so much work as a trustee for MIND in the local community, on top of being a brilliant mayor and, and just a pillar of the community for so many years. And that came after very successful career in banking she very much is an inspiration to us all old young and everything in between claire gillies was nominated for for this before this uh this coronavirus sort of lockdown but delicious and real providing tasty healthy snacks and meals indeed for the whole family is just one of the many things that she does. She's raised over £4,000 for charity. She's very active in her church community. And she did all of this after some pretty awful, uh, pretty awful bereavement in her family. So she is a brilliant nominee. Not only does Claire Childs look after her mother, her father and her twins, uh, which I think any of us would agree is, is, a pretty, is, is a pretty tall order, but she's also set up Sing From The Heart, an organisation that works in care homes and brings together people uh, in a brilliant way to bring music and joy and laughter to places that sometimes can be a bit dark. So 
Claire is a very, very worthy nominee, uh, and I'd like to meet her at some point soon. Now, Jenny Frelick makes hats, a particular type of hat, Panama hats, which I admit I only wear when on holiday, but Jenny isn't just a brilliant businesswoman. Jenny also has fought for many years to make sure the weavers of Panama hats get fair pay, because that's something that all of us, we often forget when we're buying things. It's actually the people who make these, these, these uh, products in often poor countries. Jenny not just sells them, but she also makes sure they get fair pay. She's an inspiration to us all, not just for the work she does, but just her presence in the community. And she's a very, very worthy nominee. There we go. <laughs> Yay. Well done. <laughs> okay, well, we get to the part of the night everyone's been waiting <laughs> I must say, it's been really hard keeping this a secret for such a long time and watching what wow. I say and what I do. <laughs> but um, I, I'd like to say, though, in my opinion, all of you are winners of She Inspire mm. because you all do such amazing work um, in the community and I, I think you are incredible. I love you all. But I've got to say, the winner, um, we had six, how many did I say? 632 votes. Wow. And there were 38 votes between the top three people. But I'm really, really excited and happy to say that the winner of She Inspires 2020 is Rachel Mackey. Well he said he was going out to get some eggs but it wasn't eggs was it <laughs> Rachel, congratulations. Jeez. Well done. Getting yeah. so people running in a group um, is incredible, and the impact on their lives and their families' lives is just exponential. So, congratulations. 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 Have a cheers. How do you cheers on Zoom, Rachel? Do you yeah. cheers? <laughs> Cheers. 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 Well done. Thank you so much. Um, thank you to Emily who nominated me. <laughs> I think. Pleasure. Thank you. Obviously, you know, hearing everyone's stories, um, you know, everyone completely deserves to win. I have no idea how I've managed to win, but thank you so much. Um, and hopefully we'll just keep inspiring people to get active because it is just so important. Um, and I think it'll inspire me to, to do more and to get people active. So it'll keep me going as well. So thank you so much. <laughs> Maybe be, can, I, can I also say... <laughs> Can I just say on behalf of everyone, I'm sure, a huge, huge thank you to Penny because you talk about inspiration, but Penny, the work put into this is absolutely astonishing. I know yeah. how much it means to you, how much you care for it. I know how much work you put into it, setting everything up, checking everything and speaking to everyone. So a huge thank you from everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.